Not ready. No, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> you know why he's scared? Because he's, he's spent three days in the grave. There's people out there. Come on, Rob. This is Robert Tyler and the boys here for three days in the grave, a hard rock metal band with a cool look. Nice. A very cool look and a love for Jesus Christ. And this band is composed of Robert Tyler, Gene Copley, and Greg Whitestuff. Yeah! And when we get an interview a little bit more, we're going to talk about how they hit some charts in the UK and some other places on the internet, radio, and so forth. But right now, <laughs> give a big warm welcome to Three Days of the Grave! All right, guys. Anyway, I know that sometimes people aren't used to seeing outfits like this. And we ended up shooting a music video just with these outfits, and that's, it was going to be a one-time thing. And uh, DJ from London saw the picture of it and said, you know what, you guys go out on your next you know, gig, dress like that. So we did, and as we were walking in the door, the people are applauding. So we got that. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. So that's kind of stuff. Um, just recently, I was, you know, thinking about where God's brought this band from, and you know, like he was saying, we have um, a DJ in London who is playing our music and. One of the songs that we'll be playing later actually was number four for the whole year of 2020 on the station in London. So we thought, oh, that's really cool. And it's interesting because that particular song, it took me 28 years to write. I started it in 1983 and didn't finish it until 2011. And you're only 29. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Time travel. Isn't that amazing? Way to stick with it. <laughs> but here, here, here's, you know what? I'm glad that everybody is here. Amen. And I'm thankful to be here myself. Yes. That's right. You know, I, I just lost about five friends in the past year. And um, it, it kind of got me in a very strange place because it made me more contemplate about God's grace and that He holds our life in His hand. Yes, He does. And the minute that he says that it's over, it's over. We're checking out of here. We're going someplace. Yes. The reason why we're sharing our music is so that you can find the place that Christ has for you Amen. in glory. Because he went to prepare a place for you, and he is making intercession for you as we speak. Amen. So this first song is called, believe it or not, Think About the World We're Living In. Your world.
it's going to be about a lady that we've all read about called Mary Magdalene. And, you know, not really a whole lot's been written about her, but we know that there were seven demons cast out of her. We know that she was the first one who saw Jesus when he rose from the dead. That's right. And we also know that in church history that's been misquoted that supposedly her and him got married, which is not true. Right. But God did use her and have a special place for her in the ministry. And so we, as a body of Christ, are the bride of Christ. All right? <clears throat> so in Christ, there now is no male or female, no slave, no bond. No black, no white. But we're in Jesus. We are the bride of Christ. Amen. And as the bride of Christ, he is preparing us for himself. He died and he rose again. So, and then is on in heaven making intercession for us so that when the rapture comes, that we can be presented to him a glorious church, a bride without spot or wrinkle. And Mary Magdalene was one of the signs of what God was going to do. Because in the Jewish history, they, did, they didn't like women too much. They weren't too respected. One of the prayer, Jewish prayers was, God, thank you for not making me a woman. Wow. This is Mary Magdalene. Son, 
that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That's right. But then, most people never go on and quote 17. <clears throat> For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. So salvation is what the whole message is about. It's not about you doing penance. It's not about you crawling six miles on glass on your knees. You can never, ever be righteous enough for God. Jesus paid the whole thing on his blood on Calvary when he died. Right? So if anybody tries to tell you that something more has to be done, what they're saying is, is that Christ's crucifixion wasn't good enough. It wasn't complete. But for those of us who have the living Savior in our heart, we know, we know ourselves. We know what we think when we're driving down the freeway and that guy cuts us off. We know the words that start to slip out of our mouth and if we're lucky, we catch them. And if we don't, they come out. And, you go, and you're sitting there going, I've been a Christian for a long time. Where did that come from? If you're honest with yourself, you will say you you will know that the self-righteous says on them, and then that self-righteousness they'll be standing on, on in front of God one day, and God's going to say, "I never knew you." But we went to church and we did all these fantastic things. You played church, but you didn't have a personal relationship with me. Right. The song is called "My Love for You." <laughs>
seen me go through a lot of stuff when his mom and I ended up having a divorce. One day I, she woke up and said she didn't love me anymore after 18 years. And I had to just really seek Jesus on this because that was like, that was worse than anybody dying in the family, seriously. That really was. And, um, but God brought healing. But God brought forgiveness. I was able to forgive her. I pray for her still to this day. But God also brought me a beautiful wife who loves Jesus. Amen. And serves him and encourages me to do this. My ex used to tell me this was a waste of time and people only applaud me because they feel sorry for me. Yeah. So, so I'm here. And I gave her the house so that the kids could stay in their school. And, um, but I don't regret any bit of that. Because they were only things that can be replaced. That's right. That's right. That's right. People can't be. Relationship with Jesus cannot be. That's right. That's right. The love of my son cannot be replaced. So you got the people who chase after all of the wrong things, and then I realized at the end of all of that that gold can't buy eternal life.
this since uh, about 2005. Right. I had actually given up rock and roll back about 1987. How many musicians do we have in this building at the moment? How many of you are tired of musicians who will say they'll be there and then they end up flaking out? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, what you do about that? That's what I did. I gave up music. I gave up rock and roll for that. I was doing acoustic gigs at coffee shops because I didn't really need anybody and if somebody decided to join me, that was cool. And so, one day in 2005, this guy and I were hanging out one day and he was going to a church that had a recording studio set up in there and we hit record. And I got, actually wrote about 10 songs in a two hour period. One of them were, it was a complete song that we'll do a little later. So, you know, sometimes we have to wait on God for God to open up the door. Because if we kick the door open, guess what? That, that sucker might slam shut and break your leg. Yes. You know, because I, I heard one of the pastors here talking about earlier about either submitting to God or God breaks you. I unfortunately got broken during that long time back in 87. But God restores. Yes. But during that time of restoration, he also brought lots of healing that I didn't know I needed. He's still working on I me. Mean, I'm not a work in progress. Everyone in this room who knows Jesus knows that particularity now. And God's not done with us until the day that we stop breathing.
violence, floods, wars, and all the strife fills men's hearts with fear. What do we see going on in the world right now? Bloods, wars, and strife. And people think I'm afraid. People are afraid, man, of everything that's going on right now. Nobody knows for certain what's going on. You have plague, the, you know, lots of people who weren't healthy died from. But then you have wars going on, rumors of wars. You got the Russians fighting against the Ukrainians. You have the Russians, the Iranians, and the Syrians at the border of Israel right now. Where, did you, where was Jesus born? Israel, all right? And the whole Bible took, uh, is basically centered around Israel. And you have some very evil players who are playing right now. In the book of Ezekiel 38 and 39, they're known by other names. They're known by uh, Gog, Magog, Gomer, and just to name a few. Go study Ezekiel 38 and look at what's going on right now. And then Damascus is a city that has been inhabited for over 3,000 years. But the scripture says that that Damascus will be turned to a pile of rubble. I don't know if any of you have seen pictures of Damascus lately. It's pretty close, right? Scriptures are coming to pass as we speak. God is doing what he said he would do. Actually, let me rephrase that. God is doing what he said he would allow to be done. Because that wasn't God's perfect will. This is called God's permissive will. God's permissive will is going to allow the human race to run itself into the ground. And on a horse coming one day, or a sword coming out of his mouth, the one who created you will be on that horse back.
16 years on Monday. Nice. You know, God reached out when I was 17 years old about all the men. When I went into the military, I kind of had a little eight-month period there where I wasn't quite walking with Jesus like I should have. But even during that time, there was a situation where this girl was going to commit suicide. And God told me about it and showed me where she was planning and doing it and everything. When I walked up to her and told her that, I go, why do you want to commit suicide? She goes, how do you know? I go, because God's talking to me right now. He loves you and he wants to save you. So God intervened and used this donkey, like the donkey that was on the road uh, for the prophet Balaam, and used me, spoke through me, and four months later, that girl was still alive when it was time for all of us to leave and go do the job that we were supposed to do that we were being trained for. I only say that to bring God glory. Yeah. And that he'll use any vessel that he chooses. That's right. And every one of us is an imperfect vessel. That's right. But God will use us anyway. <clears throat> Everybody is on a road to hell unless they choose Jesus as their savior and drugs and alcohol are a gateway to hell. <laughs>
like watching you guys, man. <laughs> so, I enjoyed your concert tonight, brother. And it's so good seeing you after a couple years, man. And uh, who's able to be with you to interview right now? That'd be you, awesome, brother. And we're gonna go over the little nook over there and see what, what y'all have to say, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. You guys enjoy that? Oh, yeah. 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 And what an appropriate name of the band. Easter's coming up and Three Days in the Grave. Wow. You know, first of all, talking about what Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, did for us, taking our sins and our punishment upon himself. Yes. But he didn't do what Buddha and Muhammad and Hare Krishna and, and all these other people did. He didn't stay in the grave. He busted out of there three days later. Yes, That's pretty amazing, yes. brother. Yeah. So where did inspiration, like, who, who, who came up with this name? <laughs> okay, so we have no sound. Mike, 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 I'm yeah. on. Yeah. You're on. I, I probably don't need to hear myself. Though. I always hear myself. Though. We want to hear you. Though. We want to hear you. Okay. Well, yeah. Originally, the name of the band was called Zoe Now, and Zoe is a Greek word for God's life. But nobody understood that, and it kind of sounded esoteric. And so we were sitting there one day trying to come up with a name. I go, you know what? That, that name sounds wimpy. <laughs> We, we didn't, because we're starting to write more, because we were doing a lot of acoustic and sitar music back then. We first started with Zoe and I. That's a little bit of a change. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, the acoustic stuff fell away, and uh, the more metal stuff started getting written. So I just thought, hmm, two days, good name. And you guys have a really cool image, by the way. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's Western, or if it's um, Alice in Wonderland, Manhattan, and what's going on with the image? Okay, well basically, we wrote a song called, which we didn't get to do, called Jesus Train. And we did this whole 1890s video about it, mainly in black and white. Yeah. And we were coming off of trains and going into this old church to play in the 1890s. And so uh, we weren't going to ever do this again until the, the DJ went and said. People liked it. And people liked it and it caught on. Um, we actually did get uninvited to a church because of the outfit. And they said that, you know, that people don't like, you know, phoniness. And I go, okay, so you're going to say that people didn't like Kiss? And they didn't like the law <laughs> and all those other bands. And I'm sure, you know, when they go home, they're still dressed like that, right? You know. What it is is our artistic expression. Yeah. And if everyone just wore normal street clothes, yeah, we wouldn't be my life pony. But I'll tell you what, it's pretty cool to be artistic with even things such as your, your, your hair, your, your hat, your outfit. That's right. And, and the thing is, is that I have a, I work in a hospital with a respiratory therapist. I, but I work in a unit where people, you know, check out of this planet pretty quickly. And I get to lead some of them to Jesus before they go. So I, I'm really thankful for the fact that, you know, God also gave me this ministry as, you know, a, a sideline. If anything else, you know, I'm not worried about making money. That would be nice. But you know what? It's my Prozac. And in a world that's crazy as it is right now, everybody needs something. I got Jesus, but then he gave me a little extra, you know, music. But um, the cool thing is, is I met Gene in 1985. Wow. And then for a number of years, we ended up lo lo losing contracts. And then one day I'm cruising down the street, and believe it or not, I looked over and I saw him at a bus stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I dropped my son off. Call this color the divine appointment, brother. He happens to be sitting right there. And uh, when I turned, when I dropped him off and came back home, he was still on the bus stop. Wow. So I picked him up, and uh, that was 2000. That was the end of 2000. Was that a freak coincidence, brother, or was God's hand in that? God's hand yeah. brought us back together. Obviously. Right? So if, if I were to run into him at the bus stop, I probably wouldn't even be sitting here. Wow. I had no I desire to go out and roll ever again. Wow. What about Greg? Because I know Greg, um, he's a musician of his own right, does his own thing, but also 
Well, the, the thing is, is we had another bass player who fell off a ladder and shattered his knee and had to have a knee replacement. And we had a DJ coming from London who was going to do a live show of ours and, and you know, stream it over the internet. And I needed the bass player. And a live show? Yeah. Cool. And so Greg, uh, I asked him to fill in. And so on crutches, my old uh, bass player comes. And he's listening to us rehearse. He comes up to me and says later, he goes, don't get rid of that guy, you're crazy. Wow, feel very humble. So he walks over to him and says, how would you like to join the band permanently? So my old bass player <laughs> made the this job. Whole thing happen. Hey, Greg, how are you doing, man? I, I got a little story for you. Sometimes last year, Greg came on not looking like this whatsoever, and he did some like metal music. I think it was like, acoustic guitar. And he showed us some of his music videos. Yeah, he showed us some of his music videos that are just like calm, you know, mountain streams and this and that. And I had no idea that this is the same guy who's in Three Days in the Grave. I met him before with a lot of fog hair and the hat and this and that, but he just had a different image. So I had no idea where about this person born in the thing. Yeah, this is uh, rock and roll, you know. <laughs> that was quite a funny story. <laughs> I had no idea until tonight. Yeah. You know, I write some, I write a lot of music on my own and it a long time, you know, long before I joined the game. And, on, uh, and uh we'll go to them. There you go. And uh Think of a song, it kind of comes from me from the ethers. From God, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Not the nether world. <laughs> you, know, you know, I had to cast away a few songs. Yeah, sir. You know? But, um. When you put your antenna up, you have to make sure you're doing the right station. You know, the dark side never just gives up. You know, it's like, boing, boing. It does. It does. It It tries to give me some inspiration, too. You know, yeah. I have to, like, discern. Yeah. That's what God gives work for. Light up, light up a little written word of God, and you None of my songs are in a particular genre. If it's a rock and roll song, it comes to me like a rock and roll song. If it's a reggae song, it comes to me like a reggae song. If it's a mellow song, like what he's talking about, I got some flowy stuff in the back. When you write a song, you, you know, you say, the Lord, give it to you, right? What is your goal with the music? What would be the, the ultimate thing that you would like to see happen with this music? Do you, you get this famous, your name, you make a name for yourself? Like what is the end goal? It would be awesome if this uh, activity Denji. Gene, how are you doing, brother? 
It's been a few years since I've seen you, man. I remember the last time I saw him was at this little coffee house in um, Bellflower. He had three little kids running around. And he was trying to play the drums. And I, and I said, you know what? I, I, I literally took your kid, I, and there's this little game room, and I took him in there and I started playing Simon Said and who knows what, just to make him happy and give him some good attention. And, and you know, that way when you give it back to you, they're all under control, hopefully. I don't know what, what happened when he got in the car, but. They're not little no more. No, he showed me a picture of them. They're six, eight, and nine. The oldest is about to be 10 this year. My little is about to be nine. My youngest is about to be seven. When do you guys have adult children? And you remember when they're little tykes, you blink your eyes and then you see, you know what, you know, they're driving, they're getting, they're moving off and... I remember just, when, when my kids were born, I remember just looking at them and saying, oh man, this is such a beautiful life. Brother. Because, you know, I didn't, you know, growing up, I grew up in a, in a, in a dysfunctional household. I didn't get love, I didn't say it. I, I didn't, my parents would tell me how I'm proud of you. My parents said, you want to learn something, go watch other people. I'm not going to have time to teach you. Um, I didn't get the whole thing on. So, so when my kids were born, um, I looked at them, and so now I'm trying to teach them to show them love because you know, I wanted to end up being like them. Because I, I really let them. Oh, man. So God has is, God is, God is shown me how to love my children. God has shown me how to be my dad. Because so really, I, have a, I have a daughter. She's 31 years old. I'm going to raise her. I have a six month old grandson and she won't let me see him unless I do it for my sister because she's mad because I wasn't there for her. I was there, I was there for my kids now. Yeah. She won't understand that I was young in high school. Uh, I was doing drugs all the time. Um, I was a woman. So since you brought it up, we're going to pray. We're going to join our faith with yours. So what's your daughter's name, 31 year old? Raquel. Raquel. We're gonna pray for right now, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's all join our faith together, please. Your Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. I just thank you for my brother and his, his openness, Lord God, about this, Lord God, because he knows that, that you know the devil has had a part in his past, but then you came in, you turned him around, Lord God. He has a daughter that right Raquel that doesn't quite understand that. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you would flood her with your love. Wrap your arms around her, Lord, let her know that you are her heavenly father, Lord God, and you are her, you can be her unshakable rock, Lord God. And I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that she would have a spirit of forgiveness towards her dad, and that you would rekindle just a love, a father and daughter love, Lord God, where they could just reunite, Lord God, and he'd be able to be with his grandchild, and Lord, just um, break off the, you know, years of, of um, bitterness, um, resentment, unforgiveness, pain, um, you know, uh, even uh, a numbness of heart, Lord God, and put in there in its place of tenderness and of love, Lord God, and a willingness to make um, make a new relationship happen in yes. Jesus' name, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you would also give him a special ability, Lord God, to teach what he didn't learn from his parents, and that he would be an amazing father to these little kids, Lord God, as they grow up, they're not so little anymore, Lord God, but I thank you, Lord God, for using him in this band, Lord God. I pray that everywhere he goes, whether, you know, on the job site, Lord God, or with his friends, with his family, Lord God, that he would be a light for you in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Amen. 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 God, this is just blessing me to be here tonight, brother. And just for just me to know that you and Robert met up decades ago. And you're here together, ministering for Jesus. Yeah, I met Robert. I had a girlfriend back in 85, and her sister was dating a guy that knew Robert, and they were in the band, and they were looking for a drummer. So he introduced me to Robert, and then we started hanging out, and then we lost contact for a long time, like a good, and you know, so I just totally forgot about him, you know, so not forget about him, you know, I thought about him all that time. When I met him, I didn't, I didn't recognize him, so I thought he was. When I first seen him, he was dressed up. I thought he was hot. That's in my name. You're about to take him on that. You know, yeah, like, you're putting behind your back. Yeah, so so um, he was like, you remember, you remember Gary and Robert? Well, yeah, you're Gary. You're not Robert. So he saw him. Wow. And then it was like in 2000 when we started hanging out and we started doing music. And then one day, like you said, in 2005, um, I was at this church I used to go to. And uh, we had a, a young kid. 
the basement and the front there also. And we pushed, we had a little recording, podcast recording. Yeah, a little four record, the first recording. Is that the end? Robert wrote a whole bunch of songs in the period of 90s. Yeah. Yeah, they just started doing music. Yeah, and we did a couple of bass players. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's a friendship, a godly friendship. He's like a, he's like a brother. I'm close with him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would say that I have certain friends that I would say I'm even closer to than my own family. But God puts these people in your life, in your path. And you have to know how to appreciate them. And you know how to, you have to also know how to get past obstacles because you will fight. You will be at each other's throat at times. I'm sure this happens every time. We've had our, we've had our arguments where we are kind of talking for three months, but we've always, we've always, our friendship always became one, and we've always, we've always been close. And that's, that's the thing, you know, people do this in, in marriage, um, they'll treat a bump in the road as if it's the Grand Canyon, as, 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 if, it's, as if it's insurmountable, and the only thing you can do is quit, but actually you can't, that's not the only way. And friendship, marriage, uh, business, you know, it, it, you name it. Something called perseverance. Something called putting that other person and your relationship as being more important than whatever little argument you're having that day. Uh, we know what's funny is that um, I find that Christian brothers and sisters are closer to you than their own family. Because when things happen and you do something wrong in your family, they want to turn away and not want them to do with you. But then you go to a true Christian that loves Jesus, he's going to forgive you. What happens is. When my head hits the pillow, the Holy Spirit starts talking to me and saying, "Hey, you offended your brother. You know that, right?" And then his head, his head hit the pillow at the same time and saying, "You know what? You need to go out there and forgive him." And so we have something called the Holy Spirit that lives in us, you know. And, and the Holy Spirit's real. It's not just we have faith and faith and faith in something that's not real, but it's good for us. No, God is real. God knows all things. You know, we are like a mouse and, and a and a maze, you know, was trying to find the cheat. We only see the next little turn in front of us. God's up above, he sees the whole maze. He knows how to bring two people together that have been out of contact, you know? <laughs> and he had a, a, a plan for that. And the reason why uh, I got his back in contact with It's called the providence of God. And we, we have our own appointment book. We should put it on our phone, or we write it down, or it's in our mind. But God has his own appointment book. And sometimes he'll drop in your lap something called a divine appointment. It wasn't on your it wasn't on your schedule, but to be at the bus stop and, and for him to come and pass by. It was funny how he told me the story. He said he said, he said Lord, if, if you know that's that's Gene, but if it's but it's meant to be for us to hang out, let him be there when I get back, and I was there. When you were doing construction down the street, he slowed him down. Usually not more than a five minutes at bus stop. Yeah, but construction going, so that was that was that. Because buses don't take like an hour to come usually unless there's something going on down the way. Amen. You know, like 10, 15 minutes later. Amen. You know, well, brother, it's been a tremendous pleasure talking to you and, and the rest of the band. And you guys, just, just, you know, remember this band in your prayers. Remember each and every artist tonight in your prayers. By the way, if, we, if people want to hear more of your music or get in touch with y'all, how do they do it? Um, <laughs> we, got, we got music on YouTube. Uh, we all have Facebook sites that are uh, of our own. Uh, we also have a, a, a fan page on Facebook. Three days, number three, Days and Dre, on Facebook. Uh, we usually have videos on there, and you can get in touch with us like that or on our personal Facebook pages. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys, let's just give one more big hand. Three Days in the Grave. Thank you.